What is that saying that like if you go out for revenge, you might as well dig two graves? That is always how these things work out. What's up? Now, welcome or welcome back to my channel, King Nikki TV, where I give you commentary on popular movies and TV shows. In this video, I will be recapping arguably my favorite episode of this season, HBO's the Last of Us, episode five. Now, this was pretty much a continuation of our last episode. It feels like just one big story from last, the story that was started last episode, the characters that were introduced, we get the continuation and ending of that story with this episode. Now, we were introduced to Henry and Sam, Kathleen and Perry, although when last episode ended, they did not tell us that the characters that we met were Henry and Sam, but I mean, you can put two to the two and two together but they do tell us this episode that that is in fact who pulled guns on Ellie and Joel waking them up in the middle of the night now we get to see Joel and Ellie's entrance to Kansas City and all of that mess that they got into from Henry's point of view. Now, Kathleen and Perry, Kathleen, the leader of the resistance, Perry, her right hand man. Now, this episode started off pretty freaking insane. We know from last episode that Kathleen, her resistance crew beat Fedra and won back their city of Kansas. And the start and opening of this episode pretty much seems like that night of the big win of when they finally take the city. And y'all, they were acting like complete savages. You hear me? Now... This opening was so freaking intense. And one thing that I thought was crazy, we see Henry and Sam like ducked off hiding, trying to get to safety in the midst of all of this chaos. And the resistance people are riding in these cars or not cars, like these Jeeps or whatever, um, combat vehicles. I don't know what the word is, <laughs> but they are speaking over a loud phone and they're like, you know, if you are cooperators with Fedra, give yourself up, you'll get a trial and all this nonsense, you know, basically telling you that surrender for your safety. But as they are saying this message, we literally see a dead body dragging behind the vehicle with like 15 <laughs> knives stabbed throughout his body and I'm just like yeah that's that, that's mis that's mixed messages because I don't want to be that body dragging behind your vehicle <laughs> that ain't really giving me warm tingly feelings to freaking surrender now Henry and Sam great characters that they introduced and Henry is actually um, a kid who played on Your Honor season one. I was like, I know I recognize this kid. And the more screen time he got and the more the show went on, I was like, I, that's the kid from Your Honor. I love this kid. So freaking talented. I hope I see him in more stuff. Now, we also see Kathleen with a group of conspirators that she has in jail. And I still just, y'all, I just still don't buy Kathleen as the leader but it did make a lot more sense once we got a little backstory that Kathleen's brother was actually the leader of the resistance the brother that Henry got killed by Fedra and I'm just like okay so this must be like a secession kind of thing your brother was the leader and then you take his place because I just don't buy her as a leader and you know what it might be because baby is badass like the, the actual actions and things that she does but I don't buy it because her voice sounds so sweet like it does like she has a sweet voice and it's so crazy that she will say <laughs> some kind of like you know cutthroat things but her voice is just so sweet that I just don't buy it but anyway she tells the group to that she's not Fedra and they're lucky for that, that no one has to die today. She just wants them to tell her where is Henry and they'll stand trial, which obviously they're guilty and they'll just do a little time. 
Yeah. <laughs> and one person finally speaks up after no one says anything and she tells Perry to kill everyone and tells her that Henry is with that doctor that we saw her with last episode. And I like the way they told the story and how the certain holes got filled in from last episode to this episode with giving us a full picture and full story of Kathleen and when she was in there with the doctor, Perry, Henry, Sam, we get a full vision of everything that went down. Now we end up seeing Henry and Sam getting together with the doctor that we saw last episode. And when we saw Kathleen and Perry go up in that attic where they had been staying. This time we get the beginning of that where one of the conspirators tells her that, you know, he was going with the doctor. They found, they knew someplace safe to hold up if things went bad. So we get the origins of how she got that information. And when she walks out, I was kind of like, Perry, you don't know her very well. Cause he asked her like, um, they really gonna get a trial? And I'm like, no, nigga. <laughs> but she tells him like, no, they're not getting no trial. And she tells him like, she pretty much sends him and the other guys in there to just slow daughter everyone and she pretty much says Henry is still in the city I want y'all going door to door and Perry is kind of like now like right now and baby is like what you want me to give him a few hours a day a week maybe I should just give him a month and she pretty much lets him know like look this is my top priority it's not my seventh fifth twelfth it's my top priority and really at that point I was questioning her as a leader because I'm like baby what kind of decisions are you making and the story that we get is pretty much the moral for me or part of it some of it is the saying that is as old as time that when, what is that saying that like if you go out for revenge you might as well dig two graves that is always how these things work out now we see Henry and Sam up in that attic they are low on food I think um, at the beginning they said the food would last them about 10 or 11 days and at that point they were supposed to get out but I don't even know why we stayed up here for 10 11 days with the doctor I don't know why we didn't just try to get out of town but anyway it's only Henry and Sam the doctor went off to try and find food which of course we know he ended up getting caught and captured and killed and Henry and Sam end up trying to get out of there on their own now of course by the time Kathleen gets up to the attic they're gone and this is when we see them together and hear the guns and the commotion and the crash and Henry sees Joe and that's when he tells Sam that the, they got a new plan now and what I thought was interesting was the character of Sam and the character of Henry very much mirrors the characters of Joe and Ellie and even kind of very much so as far as Henry and Joe doing whatever they have to in order to protect the, per the person that they love. In this situation, for Henry, it's his brother. And in my last video, I said it was his son, which I had wrong. It is his brother. They told us in this episode. And the dynamic of Henry and Sam and how dependent on Henry Sam is, including the fact that Sam is deaf. He cannot hear. He only speaks in sign language. So essentially kind of only speaks a language that is kind of just between him and his brother. There, No one else, at least from what we see, is able to communicate with Sam in sign language. I want to say not even a doctor from their interactions. It was only Henry that was communicating with Sam. Now... They end up, as we saw last episode, they bring it up where Henry and Sam are over Joel and Ellie is, you know, yelling for him to wake up because y'all know he hard of hearing in that one little left ear. <laughs> and this scene was so crazy because Henry, they're holding him at gunpoint and he's like, look, we don't want to hurt y'all. We actually want to help y'all, but I don't even know how we supposed to go about this in a situation like this. But look, let's just make a gentleman's agreement 
that if we put our guns down, y'all ain't gonna hurt us. But Joe, like, it's like, yeah, nah, we won't hurt you. But like the way he says it, <laughs> Henry is like, hold on, because I don't like that tone. And Elliot's like, look, that's just his tone. He just got like a <laughs> a a hole tone. But tell him, Joe, tell him that if they put their guns down, it's gonna be all good. And again, Joe says it with that tone of like, I can't believe you, bro. And it's just so funny. It really reminds me of my little sister. She has a perpetual like sarcastic monotone type of way she talks like no matter what she's saying it's just always like no I don't believe you I can't trust what you're saying because it's that tone and it's that's the tone Joel has but eventually they do put their guns down they sit down they're eating food Joel and Ellie are sharing some of their food with Henry and Sam and Henry pretty much tells Joel he knows the way out of the city. He pretty much can figure out that they came up high to be able to scope out an exit. And he tells Joel, look, I know how y'all can get out the city. And of course, the catch is that Henry cannot get out safely. He saw what Joel did in killing those guys and he needs them to get out of the city as far as the strength and fighting of Joel and that Joel needs him for the route out. And I love how the lines of morality is so blurred in this series. That is one thing that I always just love in general. Um, I personally don't feel that people are all good or all bad. I feel like we are all just a mixture of both. We do bad, we do good, we do harm. And essentially you just hope that it balances out and you do more good than harm. But I just, I don't know. I don't ever like to label someone bad or label someone good. We're just a mixture. And that is so apparent in this show. I mean, the things that Joel and Tess have done in them doing bad and doing harm, but also doing good, caring for Elle, et cetera, et cetera. And Joel and Henry have a conversation where they're talking about Fedra and everything that happened with this city, which was so mother freaking depressing. But <laughs> child, I really take my chances out with the infected child. But anyway, it's always damn humans you gotta look out for child. But anyway, Henry tells him he's not Fedra, but he's a collaborator. And instantly Joel is just like, I don't work, I don't, I don't work with rats. I don't do it. And I love how on both sides with Joel, with Henry, with Kathleen, you still get this sense of them as just their humanity, them as people, the things they've gone through that has pushed their decisions. And we get a scene with Kathleen and Perry where she's in her childhood room that she grew up in. She talks about her brother, how good he was, how kind hearted and how she is nothing like that. And his essential like what would be his reaction to all of the terrible things that she has done and she tells Perry if you are here to tell me that my brother wouldn't want me to do this that he would want me to forgive Henry you don't even have to tell me I already know that but I ain't gonna do it <laughs> and essentially we have people with these motives where they are willing to do anything at all for the person that they love, essentially, even if it means having to harm someone else that somebody loves. And we find out that Henry wasn't necessarily like a collaborator with Fedra, just he ended up collaborating with Fedra because his younger brother got leukemia. And the only way he would live was to get this medicine from Fedra. It was a scarce medicine that they didn't have a lot of, and he would need to give them something big. And he did. He gave them Kathleen's brother, who was the leader of the resistance. So it's like you can understand Kathleen. Like, nigga, you killed my brother. <laughs> And you can understand Henry in the fact that he needed to save his brother. I'm trying to avenge my brother. I'm trying to save my brother. And there's a conversation, I'm going to jump ahead, but there's a conversation at the end that Kathleen has with 
um henry telling him like do you feel like your brother is like more important than everybody else like you, but essentially yes that is how we feel when it comes to our loved ones i'm gonna burn all this down for the people that i love even if i gotta burn down your loved ones along with them because that's emotion it's not logic and essentially that is what fuels us when it comes to love when it comes to loyalty it's not logical i'm gonna hurt whoever i need to hurt as long as i'm protecting my people and essentially that is what joel has done since outbreak day with all those terrible things he has had to do innocent people he has had to kill to protect himself his brother tess to protect the people that he care about but all those people he hurt were also someone else's loved one and someone they cared about so that was essentially very interesting to me because i'm telling you like this bruh bruh look look i'm gonna burn it all down essentially like look i love my siblings my god sister my friends cousins but the one person that i am going to go to the damn edge of the earth for is my mama like i'm scorching planet i'm scorching planet earth for my mama and i don't care i'm gonna be like kathleen as a matter of fact I'm going to be more um, like crazy than Kathleen because I wouldn't care about living or dying. I only care about revenge. So me and you could die as long as you're going to die. <laughs> so I'm with Kathleen on her mission for revenge, even though I was like, it's idiotic and you ain't a good leader. At that point, I don't need to be no leader because I'm just going to go off for revenge. I don't even care about the well-being of the people that I'm supposed to be over. But anyway, they end up having the plan where... Henry says, do you notice anything odd about this city other than all the odd stuff you have seen? And it is the fact that it, it is the fact that there is no infected. And he says that Fedra drove all the infected underground. Like I can't remember 10 years ago or something like that. But he found out from a Fedra officer that there are no infected down below. But Kathleen thinks there is. Everyone thinks there is infected. So they won't be there. It'll be a safe route and child when I tell you my nerves be told up with this show you just never know what direction they're gonna go in I was expecting them to run into infected when they got down below but they didn't but one thing that was interesting we ran into there was basically a community that lived underground and that for me was really interesting and the same way that they always are typically do the time jump um from outbreak day i wish we could have time jumped um backwards to see this community maybe not have to see just the community in general but maybe like the downfall like what happened and we see a list of rules on the wall for the community which was basically like um don't let anyone in that you don't recognize without the password always lock the door um always gotta be quiet whisper um yada 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 it was a it was like i don't know five rules or something and obviously someone must have messed up someone must have broken a rule whether they let somebody in that they didn't know and then asked for the password we left a door open or unlocked but uh essentially this little underground community was taken out but i feel like that would have been really interesting to see that community but i'm not you know it's not anything for me to harp on i just felt like it would be interesting and of course i'm not familiar with the game so i don't have no ties to whatever this was in the game but i just know i'm just like oh man like the different ways that people have been surviving since outbreak day living underground i felt like that would have been really interesting to capture in the story but anyway they end up making it through Scott free like free and clear and we're walking outside and all i could think is child it's never this easy why is it so easy i know something gotta be about to happen and of course we end up with a sniper and joe ends up leaving l with henry and sam who are ducked behind the car she doesn't want him to go but he's like look this is dark the guy's a terrible shot i'm just gonna try and sneak around the back of the house so i could take out the sniper because they obviously cannot get past unless the sniper gets taken out and again i'm on pins and needles because i'm like stuff has been too easy and with this show you just never know i'm just expecting something and as joel is going into the house i'm just expecting somebody to jump out 
about because I'm just like, how you know the guy's up here by himself? It may be one person shooting, but it could be somebody else in there with him. Maybe he's not by himself, but essentially it was that easy. The guy was by himself. Joe gets a drop on him. He tries to tell the guy, look, just give me your gun. Stay in this room for an hour. I don't want to have to hurt you, but the guy don't listen. And Joel has to kill him. But just as Joel gets to the window, uh, we see Eldon, you know, we can look down. That's when Joel hears Kathleen over the little radio saying, hold them there. We're almost there. And I'm just like, God damn. God damn. It. This is why my number one thing is always don't goddamn split up. Like, I kind of don't even care the scenario. Don't mother freaking split up. Because if L was up there with him, we could have just ducked the hell out the back of the house and been gone. But that's when we see Kathleen and her damn army coming and we have Henry, Sam, and Ellie right there ducked behind the car. And y'all, there were so many moments, y'all. I literally was going so crazy. This final sequence was so freaking good. I was, y'all, I was going crazy. I was yelling because I couldn't handle it. One thing that was was really getting me was Hilda's reaction time is so damn slow. I was like, it was like three moments when I was like, El, nigga, you don't run. And I, like, I kind of was just like, L baby run up it was annoying me when we first hear the vehicles coming I'm like L run and you can kind of faintly hear Joel yelling run but he's so far away like they kind of can't make out what he's saying but the second you hear the vehicles and you know old boy ain't been shooting for a minute girl run <laughs> but anyway so the vehicles are coming L, Henry, and Sam are all trying to run. The vehicle is so freaking close to L. Joel is up with the sniper rifle trying to take out the person driving the truck. Uh, he takes her out, shoots the person driving. I don't know if it was a her, but the person driving, and that person crashes into a house. L falls, and she looking. I'm like, L, get the up, girl. Like, freaking run. All the reaction times for L felt so slow for me. I was like, baby, run. So, of course, the cars, are, the vehicles are coming. Um, the people are getting out of the vehicles. L is still laying on the motherfucking ground. Kathleen gets out of the vehicle. L finally gets up and starts to run again. But the car that crashed, I think it was like gas leaking, it explodes. L falls again. And again, she lays there for like a few seconds. And I'm like, girl, get the fuck up. It was driving me like, y'all, my heart could not take it. My nerves were told the hell up. But she ducks off hiding on the side of a car with Henry and his brother. And Kathleen gets out the car and she's just like, Henry, it's over. Like, come out, child. And Henry tells L to grab his brother and run, you know, when she gets the chance. He finna give himself up. And he pretty much says to Kathleen, I'll come out, but let the kids go. But y'all, Kathleen, like, nah, nigga. <laughs> Kathleen, ruthless. And here it's like, they kids, but she don't care because she's like, well, Sam is with you, and the girl is with the guy that killed Brian. But see, this is what be really irking my nerves when it comes to stuff like this. Look. Brian, yes, he got killed. But Elle and Joel were minding their damn business. Yo, people attack them. What the hell else was we supposed to do besides defend ourselves? Like, that irks my nerves so bad. I'm just like, girl, you worse. No, I ain't going to say, I guess I won't say worse because they the stuff that uh, Henry said Fedra was doing, she ain't doing that. But, girl, you kind of just as bad as the people you just took power from, which... Um, there is a conversation where that is said where when somebody's in power like that the people that take over end up being just as bad because we like Joel and Elle are essentially innocent in this whole thing yes you want to get revenge for your brother when it comes to Henry even though Sam ain't got well I guess Sam got everything to do with it because that's why your brother was dead for Sam but anyway you know what I'm trying to say Sam essentially ain't got nothing to do with killing your brother Henry does but Joel and, and Ellie definitely don't have nothing to do with nothing because they're just innocent people that was minding their business when your people attack them but anyway Henry uh, comes out Kathleen pulls out her gun she cocks the gun and she's like it is where it ends and y'all 
Oh wait! Oh, sorry, I skipped because I talked about this earlier, but not really in depth. When he come, when Henry comes out, um, they have a conversation where Kathleen is like, because he says you don't understand, but she's like, no, I do. I know exactly why you uh, helped Fedra. But did you ever stop to think maybe your brother was just meant to die? Maybe he was supposed to just die from leukemia. Like, how can you feel like like he's more important than everybody else? But essentially, that is what love is. You feel your loved one, for the most part, is more important than anybody else. Like, if it's between my child and your child, baby, I got to pick my child. If it's between my brother and your brother, baby, I got to pick my brother. Don't make it right. But that is the... <laughs> illogical drive that ties us to the people that we love and care about you gonna hurt whoever you gotta hurt as long as you're protecting your person so that little back and forth with them I really love that and I love Kathleen's lines in that scene but if I was here I would have had to say yeah bitch that's exactly what I think my brother is more important than your brother and everybody else because he's my brother <laughs> but also, Kathleen was right when she was like, this is what happens when you F with fate. This this is what happens because look, we're going to get there. But anyway, she pulls out her gun. She cocks it. She points the gun at Henry, ready to kill him. L supposed to be getting ready to run with um, Sam. And Kathleen says... What did she say? Oh, I wish I could remember verbatim, but she was kind of just like, it ends how it needs to, or it ends how it ends. And just as she's about to kill him, the truck that crashed starts tipping over into the ground. Now y'all, for me, this was so unexpected. Like I said, I'm not familiar with the game. And we did have Kathleen and Perry find this sinkhole last episode. But personally, I didn't know where the hell that sinkhole was. I didn't know it was anywhere at like where they're located during this scene. I wasn't thinking about that sinkhole. <laughs> now this was another moment where Puma's reaction times was pissing me off. The second that the army and Kathleen was distracted and all turned away from L them because the truck was tipping over. I was like, niggas run. <laughs> I was driving me inside. There were so many moments where I was just like, y'all could freaking run. And L of course is hiding behind the car. She don't really know what's going on. She looks under the car, but Henry is standing up. He knows what's happening. Attention ain't on you. He runs and ducks at the car with L and Sam. But again, I'm like, baby, why, why aren't we running? I don't give a what's happening with that sinkhole. Whatever it is, obviously can't be good, but the people that are trying to kill us are distracted. Why the f aren't we running? <laughs> but anyway, but y'all, let me tell you. This is when we got literally, y'all, one of the greatest, whoo, like climactic, like action sequence, ending sequence. Well, well, this ain't even the ending sequence. We we gonna get to that, like the real ending sequence. But this, like, just whoo, y'all. This was so. When that sinkhole, that truck goes into the sinkhole. Y'all, we get a swarm. I don't even know if this is called a hurt, baby. This is a swarm <laughs> of infected that come out like them World War Z infected people. Literally, they were trampling over each other coming up out of that sinkhole. And y'all, when I tell you, this is the epitome of one of those like, damn, this escalated quickly kind of moments. Like, God damn, this escalated quickly. <laughs> The heart of infected come up. And y'all, I first of all, I love all the POV shots we got, the angles we got of the angles we got of this swarm coming up. And L and them are just ducking behind the car. Uh, infected is running past them, jumping on the army. Everybody's fighting, shooting. Joel, of course, is in the tower and he's trying to help um, any infected that come near L or whatever. He's shooting. And L ends up seeing an open window in a car and she like army crawls across the ground and ducks off into the car to, you know, for safety. 
But y'all, as they fight in this crazy horde, which also don't just include infected, it got them clickers. Uh, we got a child. I was like, God dang, why y'all had to put a child in here? That's so sad because we obviously know that the child had to get bit and attacked. But the ch then we had a child clicker. But we see Perry and Kathleen. And y'all, I really wish this hadn't been revealed before the episode. Still extremely impactful. Still. But man, the freaking shock that I would have had if I saw this freaking bloater for the first time in this episode. Jesus, y'all. Like, I might have, all the screaming I did, I might have, my heart might have burst. Like, if this would have been, but I, I knew, you know, we saw this little monster in the, in the promo. I wish we didn't, but we did. But anyway, all of a sudden, after this horde comes out, which I'm presuming um, isn't just the horde that Fedra ran underground. I'm thinking it's also the, that town that was living underground because I'm, I, I don't know, I'm thinking because we got a child. But anyway, and plus the infected from the town had to go somewhere. But anyway, I'm just speculating, I don't know. All of a sudden, we get this monster, bloated, infected person that comes up out of the ground and Perry tells Kathleen to run and I'm so mad I like Perry god dang I like Perry well y'all why did I like him so much we didn't even really get like a lot of him but he just seemed like such a bad ass like one of those characters that I just really like like I would love to see a one-on-one -on -one, like hand-to-hand -hand combat fight with him and Joel like I don't know I just would love to see that but anyway he's shooting at this thing which I feel like this bloater got like Teflon, like these bullets ain't phasing him. And baby runs out of bullets. And the shot that we get of Kathleen running away, and in the background, we see first of all all the mayhem and infected killing people, but we also see the bloater like freaking grabbing niggas up like Godzilla. Wait, Godzilla don't grab people, but y'all know what I mean. <laughs> grabbing niggas up and smashing them like the Hulk. And in the background behind Kathleen running, we see the bloater freaking rip Perry's head off. And this is why when you are on a mission of revenge, you don't need to be no damn leader. Essentially, her being so tunnel vision about getting revenge for her brother got the whole army killed and whatever folk is living in the town they are now unprotected because i'm pretty sure she took the whole damn army out there with her because her mama is in this town like we got regular people in the town that's not a part of like the army and now look and they probably all finna die because the infected is out here swarming and probably finna go into Kansas City, all the way in the city. Cause I think at this point, we're like on the outer bank of the city. <sighs> Y'all, this was so damn intense. Now, Elle is in the car, but one of the, ch the child clicker gets in through the window and Joel is trying to shoot. But y'all remember when the clickers that it's like you got to get through all that stuff that's on their head, got to pierce through it. But Joel can't get it. It crawls in, but Elle is able to get out of the car before it can get her. She closes the door and she sees Henry and Sam underneath the car with two infected attacking them and she kind of look over where Joel is at and she goes over to help them and she has her knife because all I kept thinking is because she used up the bullets when she was essentially at the beginning before the infected when it was just um Kathleen and her crew Ellie was shooting as she was running but that was making me mad I'm like baby stop wasting bullets like you just shooting <laughs> I'd rather use my bullets when I know that it's likely I, I'm going to get the shot. I don't want to just be shooting in the air. But anyway, I was like, baby, where's your knife? But she had the knife and she runs over and, and kills the infected that's trying to get at Henry and Sam. And she stabs the second one that's bothering with Sam and Joel shoots him. 
So we're finally like finna run, get to Joel. And that is when Kathleen ass pops the hell up. I'm just like, God damn. God damn, Kathleen. Like, <laughs> like she is so hell bent on revenge. And she pulls the gun on them. And that's when that child clicker comes up behind her and she notices Elle looking at something behind her and she turns around and that's when the clicker gets her. And honestly, I'm fine with this, but um, it wasn't as satisfying of an ending. Like, you know how you have certain characters and you just kind of want them to go out in a more badass way. Um... Yeah, Ugh. I would rather her go out fighting because essentially the clicker just jumps on her. She don't even shoot the clicker. She don't even fight it. It jumps on her and starts like slashing at her. And what did it did it bite her head off or, or bite her neck off or something like that? But I don't know. Like, look, it's fine. It's not a gripe. I just feel like the story that we got with her and everything that was built from last episode to this one like okay for example test the way we got test um i think we saw her for two episodes and she died in that second episode that was a more satisfying ending to me for test she sacrificed herself she blew them <laughs> infected up um yeah, I just feel like this wasn't a very satisfying end for Kathleen. I wanted something way more badass. I mean, even Perry's ending was more badass. Like, baby couldn't really, like, fight or do nothing to the bloater, but he had a look. That was a good little uh, <laughs> exciting ending, trying to go head to head, toe to toe with that damn bloater that ripped his damn head off. <laughs> but anyway... You think it was over. You think you can finally breathe. Joel, L, Sam, Henry, we got out. We're holed up in, what was they in, child? A strip mall? I don't know, y'all. They was held up somewhere. And Joel and Henry are talking. L and Sam are in the room together. The door's open. You can see them. Now, earlier, when they were walking, trying to get out, L end up telling them that they're going to Wyoming, which I was honestly like, L, you gotta shut your damn mouth, baby. <laughs> like you talk too much. First of all, we have already established that Henry's gonna do whatever the hell he gotta do for his brother. He was already a collaborator for Fedra. I don't need him knowing where we going because if he get captured and we get free, he 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 gonna tell what I don't know. I just like it's dangerous. I'm not telling folk where I'm going, but anyway. Uh, Joel looked like he didn't really like when she said it either. But once we get to this point, he's talking to Henry and he's like, look, we're going to Wyoming, likely got to just walk there. But you and Sam are welcome to stay with us and come along with us. And they pretty much end up just being like, OK, we're going to all sit together. Because when Elle first brings it up, Henry is like, nah, you know what? We should likely just go our separate ways. And Elle and Sam are in the room and they've been bonding and spending time and getting along. And you get this feeling that like, okay, we could breathe a sigh of relief. It's a happy ending. Everybody done survived. Cause when we went in the tunnel, I was on pins and he was like, okay, it's only four of us. Are they, I don't think they're going to, is they going to kill somebody off? Like, cause I'm thinking, you know, infected was in the tunnel. So now we get to this point and I'm like, okay, shoot, everybody survived. <sighs> Y'all, I learned by now the freaking grim darkness <laughs> of the world of The Last of Us. No, baby, ain't no happy endings around here. <sighs> Sam is having a conversation with Elle about how, you know, is she ever scared? She's never scared of anything. And of, of course, at first she's kind of jokingly, you know, talking, but then she gets real and she's like, she's scared to be alone. And Sam ends up saying, do you think there's still any part of who we are when we become monsters? And I'm just like, well, the second he said that, I was like, damn, he infected. I did not peep it until he said that. I was like, God damn, are you freaking kidding me? And he shows L the bite on his ankle. And 
L ends up being like, my blood is medicine. And I was confused because she went to go grab something. I'm like, what is baby getting? She got an IV. I don't know about She got a syringe. Like, what is she doing? No, no. Baby got a knife. And she cuts her hand and puts the blood on his bite. Y'all. Some on this uh, L is like 14, but this for me was like the actions of like a 10 or 12 year old baby. That ain't how medicine works. First of all, it ain't take out zombie infected stuff like that. That just ain't how medicine works. <laughs> you don't just put medicine on the wound, like you gotta put stuff in like intravenously or you know, like put it in your body, in your system. You don't just take your blood and just put it on somebody's wound and be like, ta-da. I'm saying like, but honestly, I kinda ain't really know. I don't know the rules of this universe and how this infection, you know, works. Of You know, up until now, it has all been pretty science-based, but this is fantasy, it's a TV show. I don't know how, too, as far as I know, maybe she is finna just put her hand and be healing niggas like Jesus. I don't know. And he asks her to stay up with him. And then the next morning comes, Elle wakes up. The second we only get a shot of Sam from behind. I was like, damn, he infected. Because honestly, at first I had a little hope when she go to do her little Jesus healing, you know, putting the hands on people. <laughs> I ain't know the rules of this universe. So I'm like, okay, well may maybe, maybe. But the second she wakes up and we only see Sam from behind, I was like, God damn, he infected, he infected. And y'all, they cut to Joel and Sam in the uh, not Sam, Joel and Henry in the other room, and Joel wakes up to Elle screaming, and she busts out of the room with Sam hot on her, falls to the ground. Sam is on top of her. She, y'all, it was kind of gut. It was first of all, everything was just fucking gut wrenching, but it was so gut wrenching to have Elle screaming Joel, like screaming his name. And he just had a conversation with Henry about how it's easier for kids, you know, in these situations and getting over and moving on because no one is relying on them. And like, that's the burden is the fact that Joel and Henry, they don't have to just make it through these horrific things and have their life on the line and all of this, they have someone relying on them. So it just kind of really hit in your gut because Joel gets up, he goes to grab the gun, but Henry gets it, points it at Joel and just, it's like, no, that's like, that's my brother. Like, no, no, no. So it was so gut wrenching when you could see the panic, the emotion, frustration, anger, terror on Joel's face as Elle is screaming for him. And as he try to move to go help and Henry like shoots at, at the ground to keep Joel from going over there. And I was watching this like, Henry, you gonna be one of them? Like while your family is infected and you just don't want nobody to kill him? But he ends up shooting his brother and killing him. And I'm just like, y'all motherfuckers. I thought we was getting a happy ending, but hey, dumb dits me. <laughs> Everything is dark and grim in this world, which I like. <laughs> but that ain't the end of the gut punches. He is, Henry is still holding a gun. He put, he points the gun, looks towards Joel, and he's like, what did I just do? And he says his brother's name and we see the blood pooling. And Joel's just like, give me the gun, give me the gun, give me the gun. But the whole, and it takes me back to what Kathleen said of this is what happens when you F with fate of maybe your brother was just meant to die. In order for his brother to not die, he sacrificed someone else's life. He went through all of this. And in the end, his brother still dies. And it actually ends up being way more horrific. If his brother would have just died from leukemia, 
instead of the terror of being attacked, bitten, and then you having to kill your brother, even though it ain't, you know, your brother, that person is dead, they're infected, but still, essentially, kill your brother. And once his brother is dead, it's like, that's who I did all this for. You know, I, I got no other reason to survive. And he kills himself. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all. And L is like looking at him. Joel screams like, no. And he does. And it's like, Jesus. Well, let me tell you, though. One thing I have always loved is an unhappy ending. I actually always prefer it over a happy ending because essentially, look, I might be morbid, but I feel like it's way more realistic to not have a happy ending. And I just like very gut punching, gut wrenching, dramatic, emotional, because I feel like that's life. That's the human existence. Like I love stuff that is going to just really pull strong emotional reactions from me as a viewer. I love a dark grim ending as opposed to a happy ending. So yeah, when we are hold up in here and we got out of the mess and the kids are in the room bonding and Joel is finally being a little, a little nice to him and they talking and we thinking we got a happy ending and we moving on to Wyoming. Yeah, that would have been nice. But the real ending that we got. <laughs> Woo, y'all. But that ain't even the end of the end and the end of the gut punches. We see... Joel and Ellie, they've buried Sam and Harry. And Ellie puts his little, um, I forgot what those things are called, but he's deaf and he writes on this little kid's thing to communicate. She puts it down over his grave and she asks Joel which way is west, shaking stuff off emotionally just like Joel does. And she just starts walking and Joel looks down and she's written on his little pad. I'm sorry, y'all. I was like, God damn. God damn. Like, oh my God. Y'all, I couldn't. I was like, child, I can't breathe. It was just so freaking intense. Whoo, y'all. And I really feel like the only reason I didn't cry on this episode is because I was still hopped up on adrenaline from that action packed sequence. That is likely the only reason I didn't cry. <laughs> But man, y'all, it's just really <sighs> crazy to me how we keep losing these characters. And I'm like, man, I love these characters. And it's so crazy how other shows just can't write a likable character to save their life. And in this series, we keep getting characters that I like, but they keep motherfucking dying. <sighs> Lord, it's up. But y'all. The episode ended and then they showed like scene from upcoming episode and Joel finally gets to his brother and I'm watching like, oh shoot, I'm hyped for this. All of a sudden I see February 19th on the screen. I'm like, what the hell? My niggas, we got to wait until, wait, is that new? What's today? The Yeah, we finna miss a week. I, don't, I was thinking February 19th was further than it is, but still, it's far. It ain't next week. We finna miss a week. I'm like, nah, nah, give me my episode, bro. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. As always, thank you for supporting the content. Make sure you let me know in the comments what did you think about this episode. This is definitely my number one favorite episode. This is pretty much... I haven't not liked an episode so far, but I am more of the, you know, chaos, gore, action, uh, horror sequence kind of person, but I do enjoy the story, the heart of the narrative. I do enjoy the character development, the more character driven moments. So this for me was my favorite episode because it pretty much in involved all the elements we got the heart and the character driven moments but we also got the action and the chaos moments so for me this was my favorite because i do not prefer just the character story driven episodes that's not what i prefer they were still great episodes but you know it's 
I'm a horror girl and I want the death and the mayhem and the chaos and the action. So the fact that we got all of that in this episode, this really, and then just, just the writing, the characters we got, the story, the type of action we got. I think this is the most infected we've got. Um, I think that's what they said on the inside of the episode. Like this was the most infected and y'all, do you know what? I know I already signed off, but I'm still thinking. <laughs> When I was watching the inside the episode, I would never want to be an actor. I would prefer to like the number one thing I would want to do if I worked in movies was to do the I would want to do the practical effects. That would be my ultimate dream. But the one thing I also would love to do is to be like the extras when they were talking about like getting like body movement on um, people to, you know, to we needed people, you know, as they affected. Those are the roles I would love to play. Like I would love to play like a zombie or one of these infected and be like the people in the background going crazy and ripping niggas heads off. <laughs> I would, that sounds to me like such a dream way beyond being an actor. I would never want to be an actor. Like I just don't want the spotlight. I don't want to be on, in front of the camera, but I'll be in front of the camera if I'm in, in the midst of the horde. <laughs> okay. Signing off for real. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.